assignment that we're going to be focusing on today is homework 19. Homework 19 is a review of everything we talked about in the first quarter. So if you were able to answer the questions on your homework, it means that you are so far, you have 50% of your midterm that's going to be a piece of cake because your midterm is going to be in December and it covers everything from the first two quarters. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's look at number one. I wanted to know what the five characteristics of life are. Do the five characteristics of life have to be in order? No, they don't. We just need to know what they are. So can somebody shout one out for me? Just shout it out. Metabolism. metabolism. Excellent. So metabolism is one characteristic of life. If you don't have it, please write it. Give me another one. Heredity. Heredity. Thank you, Tamika. Heredity is another. What about a third? Reproduction. Look at you guys. You know things about living things. Reproduction. Somebody just said it. Cells. Cells or cellular organization. Um, last one, E, which one is it? So we have metabolism, heredity, reproduction, cellular organization. Starts with an H, it's a really big one. If you don't have it, you die. Homeostasis, very nice. So homeostasis, excellent. Malik, your dot, your friend. Malik, your dot, your friend. Thank you. All right, let's look at number two. Franklin always noticed that his body temperature remained, here's the key word, stable when he was in good health. What characteristic of life accounts for that stability? Homeostasis. You are going to see that over and over and over again. What other word might mean the same thing besides um, stable? It starts with a B. Balance. Very nice. So let's write that as well. All right, let's look at number three. Number three. My friend Samuel understood that all living things have to participate in, here's the key, chemical reactions in order to maintain life. What characteristic of life represents the sum total of all chemical reactions inside of an organism? Ooh, what is it? Metabolism. So metabolism. What if instead of saying chemical um, reactions, what if instead I said energy? Would it still be metabolism? Yes, it would. So energy or metabolism, or I'm sorry, en energy or chemical reactions are all going to mean metabolism. Let's look at number four. List the five steps of the scientific method. Do the five steps have to go in order? Yeah. Yes. So these have to be, must be in order. If they're not in order, they're wrong. So we have to go in the right order. What's the very first step? State the problem. Very nice. State the problem. What's another way of saying that? Starts with an O. Observation. So we can also say that. Observation. What are the two types of observations we discussed? Qualitative and quantitative. Very nice. Which one is a number? Quantitative. Pima, good job. All right, let's look at the next one. What comes after state the problem? What's the next step? Gathering information. Gathering information and state the problem or observations are the same thing. What's the next step? Starts with an H hypothesis so hypothesis what is a hypothesis it's just an educated guess right and we can't make an educated guess unless we have gathered information made observations and stated a problem what comes after a hypothesis starts with a p people do this when they Oh, there you go. So make a prediction. So we're going to make a prediction. All right, what's the next step? The next step is the most important. Uh, test the hypothesis. We can't analyze the data. We haven't done something yet. Test it. You need, but what kind of experiment? It has to be controlled. So we need a controlled experiment. There are lots of really bad experiments, but we don't want to use really bad experiments. We want it to be controlled. And then what's our last step? It's the last thing that comes in a movie, last thing that happens in a book. The conclusion, or we could also say theory, 
right? So those are your five steps of the scientific method that you must know in order. I want to quickly, because it seems like people have forgotten, when I talk about a controlled experiment, what does that mean the experiment has to have? How many groups? At least two. And the two groups have to be what? What are the names of them? What are the names of the two groups in a good experiment? Uh, well, thank you. So I need a control group. And then what's the other group? The experimental. The experimental group. We have to have both. Why do we need a control? Remember our chant? It's the thing that stays the? You need it to compare. So you want to make sure that you know that. Does anybody have any questions about one through four? Can I go on? Can I go on? All right. Let's look at number five. For number five, you had to analyze an experiment. So it says, Jamal wanted to see if he could improve the gas mileage in his 1974 Chevy Impala. He decided the best way to test this was to try different types of fuels. He completed five different trials, which are outlined in the following table. Where can we usually find the IV and the DV? Uh, in the very beginning, the first two sentences. And if you look, we only have three. So let's see if we can figure out the IV. The IV is what I change. So if I'm Jamal, what am I changing? What am I changing? If I'm Jamal, what am I changing? The type of fuel. So this is going to be my IV. If I'm Jamal, what am I measuring? Yeah, miles per gallon or gas mileage. This is going to be my DV. So let's go ahead and look for A. What is the independent variable in Jamal's experiment? You already told me. It's going to be the type of fuel. Perfect. Uh, for B, what is the dependent variable in Jamal's experiment? Gas mileage, or we can say mileage or miles per gallon, that works. And then what is the control? What do you normally put in a car? Gasoline. gasoline. So this right here is going to be my control. So the car that receives gasoline is the control. How many experimental groups are there? How many are there? One, two, three, four. So there are four experimental groups. Because this is my control. Right? So there's always going to be one control, and then everything else is going to be the experimental group. Any questions about number five? All right. Let's move on to the back. For number six, you had to uh, prove that you understood the difference between a hypothesis observation and a conclusion. So it says, if Jamal's gasoline, if Jamal uses gasoline, then his gas mileage will be the highest. Is that a hypothesis, an observation, or a conclusion? That's a hypothesis. He's making an educated guess. We don't know because he hasn't done the experiment yet, so it can't be a conclusion. And it's not an observation because he's not observing anything. So that doesn't work for us. Let's look at B. Is it a hypothesis, an observation, or a conclusion? Jamal's car is brown and has four wheels. That's an observation. Question for you. If I said his car was brown, is that qualitative or quantitative? It's qualitative. What if I said it had four wheels? It's quantitative. How do you know the difference? Yeah, because it has a number. And what does N stand for? Stands for numbers. Very nice. Let's look at number seven. You had to read a graph. What's the very first thing that you should always look at when you're reading a graph? The title. So this should be the first thing that you're looking at. So you should be looking at the title. What does the title say? Massive fungi grown in forest leaf litter. Is and then we need, fungi? it's fungi. Fungi is pronounced incorrectly. So it's fungi. Word. All right, let's look at our two axes. Which axis is the y axis? Uh, y to the sky. sky. So which one's the y? This one up here, right, the one going up, and that means this one is going to be my x. Now we need to look at A. What is the independent variable? How do you always know what the independent variable is? But how do you know when you're looking at a graph? It's always on the, it's always on the x, right? So what is my independent variable? 
It's going to be days. Very nice. What is my dependent variable? Mass of our fungi. Very nice. What units are being used on the y-axis? Grams are being used. Brilliant. Does anybody have any questions on number seven? No questions? Can I move on or are we still writing? Malik. Brooklyn, why don't you have a seat next to Molly for today? Molly, can you raise your hand so that Brooklyn can have a seat next to you? And then, Brooklyn, you need to pick up a copy of the day sheet on the back table. All right, let's look at number eight. For number eight, it says Terrence was trying to look at an insect using a stereo microscope. And we have not done, actually, you know what? Let's cross off eight, let's cross off nine, and let's cross off ten because we haven't gotten to our microscopes yet. We will be getting to it. Oh, do you think you know? Yeah. All right, let's do it. While peering through the eyepiece, he noticed that the insect was larger, but it was blurry. Is he having an issue with magnification or resolution? Magnification. No, it's larger. That's not an issue. What's the problem? It should be resolution. Resolution has to do with how clear it is. When making a wet mount slide, it's necessary to place a cover slip over the specimen at a 45 degree angle. Why should we do this? So we can't escape and no. And so, can't, um, so we get no bubbles. So we get no bubbles. And then the last one, if Marco is using a microscope that has an objective lens of 40, what is the total magnification? It's always going to be 40 times the eyepiece, which is 10. What is 10 times 40? 4,400. When you multiply by 10, all you do is add 1, 0. So it's going to be 400, which we haven't talked about yet, and we will. Let's look at number 11. Which statement best states the importance of using a control group? Everybody should be able to answer this. What's the importance of a control group? What's the key? What word are you looking for? Comparison, right? We need it for comparison. So what should the answer be? It should be A. Anybody have any questions about the homework? If I were you, I would make sure that you have this homework handy, especially when it comes time to preparing for the midterm. I'm going to see it again. Okay?